West Africa has one of the fastest growing populations in the world. According to UN predictions, the number of people will increase from now 340 to 800 million by the middle of this century. Increasing industrialization, urbanization and traffic have already led to a rapid increase in air pollution. If no regulations occur, pollution levels may soon exceed those of China or India. High concentrations of fine particles and other pollutants in the cities along the Guinea coast cause respiratory diseases and reduce the economic capacity of the workforce. According to a recent report of the World Health Organization, 2.2 million people in Africa die from environmental pollution every year, particularly young children and older people. Every morning patients come and then they tell the doctor that they are sick. Of course, it's not easy to relate it to the pollution, but usually as we know, uh, the pollution is related to heart diseases, to skin diseases, and then to respiratory diseases. Pollutants from the cities may also impact on ecosystems, biodiversity and food production on a regional level through increasing ozone and acids. There's an urgent need to increase awareness of this problem and to develop strategies to combat environmental risks in West African cities, homes and workplaces. Increased levels of pollution may also change the weather and climate of West Africa and beyond. Aerosol particles, directly emitted by humans or produced in the atmosphere from gases, affect the amount of sunshine reaching the surface. When water condenses onto the tiny particles, clouds form. In clear air, clouds consist of few large droplets allowing more light to penetrate through the clouds. In polluted air, numerous small droplets reflect more light and produce less precipitation. Associated effects on temperature, rainfall and cloudiness can affect important socio-economic factors such as water availability and energy production by hydropower. To date, the impacts of the projected rapid increases in anthropogenic emissions in West Africa are largely unknown. State-of-the-art measuring devices are usually lacking. Existing data are often not digitized and therefore not available to scientific research. Ironically, therefore, research on air pollution is concentrated in Europe, where the exposure of humans is small compared to Africa. A new EU co-funded project entitled Dynamics, Aerosol, Chemistry, Cloud Interactions in West Africa, or short DAKIVA, will for the first time provide a comprehensive scientific assessment of pollution impacts on health, the environment and climate. The Kiva is composed of uh, 18 organizations in atmospheric science and health from Germany, France, the UK, Switzerland, Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast and Benin. Um, and it's coordinated by the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology here in Germany. And we also work closely with West African weather services, research centers and, and ministries. A key element of Dakiwa is a large international field campaign conducted in West Africa in summer 2016. The campaign included measurements from three research aircraft, weather balloons and ground sites in cities and rural environments. To obtain representative data about air pollution and its chemical composition, Four intensive campaigns are being conducted in Abidjan in Ivory Coast and in Cotonou in Benin. Emissions from waste burning, domestic fire, traffic and charcoal making have been sampled. To measure the personal exposure of women, drivers or children living close to pollution sites, participants are equipped with aerosol impactors. 
In parallel, an epidemiological survey is made with the census of respiratory diseases and morbidity at the hospitals close to the experimental sites. With these data, an evaluation of the severity of the problem will be made to advise policymakers on regulatory measures. So our big challenge is to, to have that data for Africa, since everything is totally uh, different here regarding the sources, the population, the living, the being living. And in fact, even if we know that they are right, there are a problem of pollution in Africa, there are no regulation, even if these data are uncertain, it's important to consider them and uh, the anthropogenic activity will increase and increase. And if nothing is done, the pollution here and the health issue can be, and it's what we have calculated with models already, can be higher than in China in 2030, for example, regarding the particles uh, impacts. Ground-based measurements at inland sites were made to better understand atmospheric conditions, in particular the formation of low-level clouds. These are important for the regional weather and climate and interact directly with pollutants from the cities. A wide range of surface-based instrumentation were deployed in summer 2016 along a west-east transect. Kumasi in Ghana, Savey in Benin, and Ile Ife in Nigeria. During this time, 15 intensive observation periods, or IOPs, were coordinated between the three sites. We have altogether seven stations here in southern West Africa from which we launch four times a day weather balloons. And they are very important because they probe the atmosphere in the vertical, temperature, humidity, pressure and wind. And this needs to be coordinated. These data go into real time into a global network. To probe the vertical structure of the atmosphere, more than 750 weather balloons were released into the West African sky in June and July 2016. These sondes measure temperature, humidity, wind and pressure every second, up to about 20 kilometers. This part of the campaign strongly involved African weather services and researchers, as well as African and European students. A particular asset of the 2016 campaign were coordinated research flights by a German Falcon 20, a French ATR-42 and a British Twin Otter. In total, 155 science hours were flown from Lomé Military Airport, providing robust statistics of cloud properties in different chemical landscapes, such as ocean, industry, oil exploration, city, forest and agricultural environments. All three aircraft had comparable instrumentation to do gas phase chemistry, aerosol, cloud and other meteorological measurements. The three aircrafts are going to be making measurements that no one else can. Uh, at, this, uh, at this very moment, there are a few places where people make measurements on the ground. Uh, some in the city, some further north in Save or Kumasi. The aircraft, with the aircraft, we can chase the weather wherever it is. So we want to sample a particular city plume. We know we dev devise a, a flight plan to go there and we make the measurements around the city, downstream of the city, to get as much as possible measurements con in connection with the pollution associated with the city. So one of the main objective of this campaign is also uh, to uh, refine the knowledge that we have in, in a, of chemistry and aerosol processes associated with anthropogenic emissions from the cities. The Dakiva project also involves a wide range of computer models with different resolutions and levels of complexity. Realistic model runs allow a direct comparison to field measurements, while sensitivity experiments reveal the stability of the simulated weather and climate against changes in certain model settings. 
So modeling is essential to the DACUA program as a whole because ultimately our measurements are limited. We only have measurements from certain places and certain times. And computer models really allow us to fill in the gaps and understand what we're seeing. Um, they also kind of give you a framework to do experiments. So in a model, you have the, free, the freedom to uh, perhaps switch off the emissions from human activities and see what effect that has, which you can't do in the real world. And ultimately, we're aiming to improve our models because the models are what allows us to make predictions, both on the weather and the climate timescale. So the observations are essential to evaluating those models, um, understanding what they can and can't do, and understanding the implications for our predictions, and also understanding the implications for how we need to improve models in the future. Observations from the Dakiva field activities will also be used to validate satellite retrievals of aerosols, cloud, radiation, and precipitation. Dakiva uses data from a variety of satellite instruments to advance understanding of key physical processes and feedbacks. The fact that the research flights were coordinated with ground site activities and satellite overpasses facilitates comparisons between the different platforms. Ultimately, this will help to provide improved longer-term remote sensing data for the region. The Dakiva project has produced a, a benchmark data set uh, for a region where the lack of data has impeded scientific progress for a long time. And with these data, we can now uh, solve some key uh, issues in the areas of atmospheric pollution, weather and climate. And we can also use these data to improve computer models and satellite data sets, which we can then use to make predictions for this region. And ultimately, we need to condense all these scientific results into a form that policymakers can use uh, to develop strategies to reduce air pollution to the benefit of the West African people.